Once upon a time, nestled in the heart of a serene forest, there was a humble village surrounded by towering mountains and dense woods. This village was known for its tranquility, where the gentle rustle of leaves, the songs of birds, and the distant sound of flowing rivers were the only noises that interrupted the silence. The villagers lived in harmony with nature, practicing the teachings of Zen and Buddhism to guide their lives. They believed in simplicity, mindfulness, and the pursuit of inner peace, at the edge of the village lived a wise old monk. His small house was a simple abode, built with wooden planks and covered with a thatched roof. The house was surrounded by a beautiful garden where flowers of every color bloomed. And a small stream flowed gently nearby. The monk spent his days meditating, tending to his garden, and sharing his wisdom with those who sought it. One day, a young man from the village approached the monk with a troubled heart. His face was lined with worry, and his eyes betrayed the sleepless nights he had endured. The monk, noticing the young man's distress, invited him to sit on the porch and offered him a cup of tea. The young man took the cup, but his hands trembled as he held it, My child, what troubles you so? The monk asked gently, the young man sighed deeply, his shoulders slumping as he spoke. Master, I have always tried to live my life according to the teachings of Zen and Buddhism. I have sought peace, harmony, and balance in all things. But lately, my home has become a place of unrest. I feel as though the peace I once had is slipping away, and I do not know why. The monk nodded, his expression calm and understanding. Tell me more, he said, the young man hesitated, choosing his words carefully. There are three people in my life who have come to stay with me recently. Each of them is someone I felt obliged to help, but now I feel their presence is bringing a great deal of turmoil into my home. I do not wish to turn them away, but I fear that their influence is causing me harm." The monk listened intently, sipping his tea. He knew that the young man's story was not just about his physical house but also about his mind and spirit. In Zen and Buddhist teachings, the concept of one's house often symbolizes one's inner self, the mind, heart, and soul. Allowing certain influences into this space can disrupt one's peace and lead to suffering. My child, the monk began, there are three kinds of people you should never let into your house. These are the types of individuals who, whether intentionally or unintentionally, will disrupt the harmony of your inner self. Let me tell you a story about each of them. The first person, the gossiper, in a neighboring village, there once lived a man who was known for his sharp tongue. He took great pleasure in speaking ill of others, spreading rumors, and creating discord among the villagers. His words were like seeds of poison, planting doubt and mistrust in the hearts of those who listened. One day, this man arrived at the house of a kind-hearted family. The family, being generous and hospitable, welcomed him into their home, offering him food and shelter. The gossiper, true to his nature, began to speak ill of others in the village, whispering his poisonous words to the family. At first, the family paid little attention to his words, thinking them harmless. But as time went on, they found themselves becoming more suspicious of their neighbors. They began to question the intentions of those around them, and soon, their once peaceful home was filled with doubt and anxiety. The father, who had always been a man of strong faith, started to doubt the teachings he had lived by. The mother, who had always been kind and compassionate, began to see others with suspicion. Even the children, who once played joyfully in the garden, became fearful and withdrawn. The gossiper had sown his seeds of discord, and the family's home, once a sanctuary of peace, 
became a place of unrest, the young man listened carefully to the monk's story, nodding in understanding. Master, he said, I believe I have allowed such a person into my home. Their words have filled my heart with doubt and suspicion. How can I restore the peace that I have lost? The monk smiled gently. My child, the first step is to recognize the poison that has entered your home. You must understand that the gossiper's words are like smoke, they may cloud your vision, but they do not have the power to change the truth. Let go of the doubt and mistrust that has taken root in your heart. Trust in the teachings that have guided you, and do not allow the gossiper's words to take hold of your mind, the young man bowed his head in gratitude, feeling a sense of relief wash over him. The monk continued, there is also a practical step you can take. Politely distance yourself from the gossiper. You need not confront them with anger or hostility, but simply create space between yourself and their influence. In time, your home will regain its peace. The second person, the complainer, the monk began his second story with a soft sigh, as if recalling a memory from long ago, there was once a traveler who came to a peaceful village much like ours, he began. This traveler had a peculiar habit, he would complain about everything. The sun was too hot, the rain was too wet, the food was too bland, and the nights were too cold. Nothing was ever good enough for him, and he made sure that everyone around him knew it. One day, the traveler arrived at the house of a humble farmer. The farmer, known for his generosity, welcomed the traveler into his home. The farmer's wife prepared a simple but hearty meal, and the farmer offered the traveler a place to rest for the night. But the traveler, true to his nature, began to complain. The food was not to his liking, the bed was too hard, and the farmer's home was too small. The farmer and his wife, who had always been content with their simple life, began to feel the weight of the traveler's complaints. The farmer, who had always taken pride in his work, started to see flaws where he had once seen beauty. The wife, who had always been grateful for what she had, began to feel dissatisfaction creeping into her heart. The traveler's complaints were like a dark cloud that hung over the house, casting a shadow on everything the farmer and his wife had once cherished, as the monk told this story, the young man could see the parallel in his own life. He realized that he had allowed someone into his home who was constantly complaining, and this had begun to affect his own sense of gratitude and contentment. Master, the young man said, I see now that I have allowed a complainer into my home. Their dissatisfaction has started to infect my own heart, and I find myself growing weary of the life I once loved. What can I do to regain my sense of contentment? The monk nodded knowingly. My child, the complainer is like a leech that drains the joy and contentment from your heart. To regain your peace, you must first recognize that their complaints are a reflection of their own discontent, not a reflection of your reality. Practice gratitude in your daily life, focus on the blessings you have, no matter how small. When you are mindful of the goodness in your life, the complaints of others will lose their power over you, the young man felt a sense of clarity and determination. He realized that by cultivating gratitude and distancing himself from the complainer's influence, he could restore the peace in his home. The third person, the manipulator, the monk paused for a moment, his eyes reflecting a deep understanding of human nature, the third person you should never let into your house, he began, is the manipulator. This person is often the most difficult to recognize, for they are skilled in the art of deception. They present themselves as trustworthy, kind, and helpful, but beneath the surface, they seek to control and manipulate others for their own gain, 
in a distant village, there was a family who had always lived in harmony. They were guided by the teachings of Zen and Buddhism, and their home was a place of love, respect, and understanding. One day, a traveler arrived at their doorstep. This traveler was charming and seemed to have a deep understanding of the world. He spoke of wisdom and offered advice that seemed sound, the family, believing the traveler to be a wise and kind person, welcomed him into their home. At first, everything seemed well. The traveler helped around the house, offered counsel on important matters, and even brought gifts for the family. But over time, the traveler began to subtly influence the family's decisions. He would suggest small changes in their routine, offer advice that seemed beneficial, but gradually, his influence grew stronger. The family, unaware of the manipulation, began to rely on the traveler for guidance. They no longer trusted their own instincts and began to doubt their own judgment. The traveler's influence spread like a web, ensnaring the family in a trap of dependency. One day, the family realized that their once peaceful home had become a place of tension and unease. The decisions they made no longer felt like their own, and the harmony they had once enjoyed was replaced by a sense of confusion and unrest. The young man listened to this story with a heavy heart. He realized that the manipulator was the most dangerous of all, for their influence was insidious and difficult to detect, master. The young man said, his voice filled with concern, I now see that I have allowed a manipulator into my home. Their influence has been subtle, yet I feel as though my thoughts are no longer my own. How can I break free from their control and restore peace to my life? The monk's gaze softened as he replied, The manipulator's power lies in your willingness to surrender your own judgment to theirs. To break free, you must first reclaim your own sense of self. Reflect on the decisions you have made under their influence and ask yourself if they align with your true values and beliefs. Trust your intuition, for it is the voice of your inner wisdom. The young man nodded, beginning to understand the depth of the monk's words. But how do I distance myself from someone who has already woven themselves into the fabric of my life? With compassion and firmness, the monk answered. You need not confront the manipulator with anger or resentment. Instead, gently but firmly reassert your own boundaries. Gradually take back control of your decisions, and make it clear that you no longer require their guidance in matters of your life. In doing so, you will weaken their hold over you, and they will eventually seek another place to exert their influence." The young man bowed deeply, feeling a sense of enlightenment. The monk's wisdom had shown him the path to reclaiming the peace that had been lost. He understood now that his home, both the physical space and his inner self, was sacred, and it was his responsibility to protect it from harmful influences. As the young man prepared to leave, the monk offered him one final piece of advice, remember, my child, that your home is more than just the four walls that shelter you. It is the sanctuary of your mind and spirit. Be mindful of who you allow into this space, for their presence can either nurture your peace or disrupt it. The gossiper, the complainer, and the manipulator are like storms that threaten to unsettle the calm waters of your soul. Protect your home, both inside and out, and you will find that peace will always be with you." The young man thanked the monk and returned to his home with a renewed sense of purpose. He gently distanced himself from those who brought negativity into his life. And in time, his home once again became a place of tranquility and joy. The lessons he had learned stayed with him, guiding him in every interaction, reminding him to guard the sacred space of his inner self, and so, the young man lived out his days in peace, 
his home a sanctuary that echoed the wisdom of the old monk. In this way, he found the true essence of Zen and Buddhist teachings, not in the absence of challenges, but in the mindful preservation of his inner harmony. Thanks for watching. Hope enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Just click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next. See you in the next video.